At the start of the 1970s, the question could have been asked whether a died in the wool art house movie could also be a highly effective vampire film with Harry Kumel's Daughters of Darkness. The answers are resounding yes. I'm Stephen Archibald and welcome to my movie podcast. <laughs> Silly tales about ghouls chased away by garlic and vampires shrinking from crosses. He kidnapped young girls and kept them chained to give blood. Blood for her to bathe in and drink. And she bit them everywhere. No. And then she pushed white hot pokers into their faces. And when they parted their lips to scream, she shoved the flaming rod up into their mouths. Help it. Hello. I bid you a warm welcome to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews, The Dark Arts, Daughters of Darkness, 1971. The French director, Jean Roland, had started making arty vampire movies in the late 1960s. However, it was the Belgian filmmaker, Harry Kumel, who made the first significant picture from this subgenre. Daughters of Darkness appeals to both intellectuals and fans of exploitation cinema. In the 1970s, the bloody Countess Elizabeth Bartori featured in at least four big screen movies. Ingrid Pitt played her in Countess Dracula from 1970. Lucia Bosse played her in Blood Ceremony from 1973, whereas Paloma Picasso was Bartori in Immoral Tales from 1974, and Delphine Seyrig is also the Countess in Daughters of Darkness. Miss Pitt and Miss Seyrig received much praise for their performances. What differentiates Delphine's Countess Bartori is that she would exist in the late 20th century. Stefan, who's played by John Carlin, and Valerie, who is portrayed by Danielle Wieme, are an attractive newlywed couple. They decide to reside at a sumptuous hotel in out of season Ostend. Stefan and Valerie are the only guests. That is, until a very glamorous blonde woman arrives with a beautiful dark-haired companion by her side, the blonde being the Countess Bartori, and the brunette, her lover Ilona. It soon dawns on the viewer that Stefan is a man with much to hide. Apart from the fact he's covering up his homosexual experiences, he also turns out to be a sadist, fascinated by blood and death, characteristics which the vampire Countess and Ilona will play on. Sure, the film titillates with its scenes of lesbian longing and its male and female nudity, but it has emotional and psychological depth and the performances are all pitch perfect. Delphine Seyrig's commanding aura positively radiates from the screen. When the Countess arrives at the hotel, Its middle-aged clerk tells her that he first saw her there decades ago. He's dumbstruck by the fact she looks exactly the same. The hotel clerk was played by the German actor Paul Esser and the awe Bartori inspires in him is convincingly conveyed. Delphine's acting career took off after meeting the renowned French film director Alain René in New York. He cast her in his pleasingly baffling Last Year at Marion Bad, which was made in 1961. Delphine and Alain were dating each other when she was offered the Bartori role. Miss Seyrig was not keen on doing it, but with René being a graphic novel fan, he could see how effective the movie would be. Simply from the rich imagery it conjured up in his mind. Luckily, he persuaded Delphine to take the part. Delphine's film credits include Louis Bunwell's 
the Milky Way, and the discreet charm of the bourgeoisie, as well as the Day of the Jackal and the Black Windmill. Sadly, Delphine died at the age of 58 in Paris. The illness which took her life has never been disclosed. It's been said that some of the finest directors haven't been great when dealing with their actors. Harry Kumel seems to be a prime example. During the making of this film, he hit the actress Danielle Wieme. Unsurprisingly, her co-star, John Carlin, was so outraged by this that he punched Kumel in her defense. Ironically, for Kumel, Carlin wasn't his first choice for the role of Stefan. The director had wanted the terrific English actor Malcolm McDowell, which would have been after Malcolm had starred in Lindsay Anderson's If and before he took the lead in Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. Of course, Malcolm declined to take part in Kumel's project. One of the movie's financial backers was the American company Gemini Pictures International. They insisted on John Carlin for the role of Stefan Chilton. While I admit I would have loved to see McDowell's interpretation of the character, I think Carlin's just fine in the role. John Carlin made a name for himself playing Willie Loomis in the spooky daytime serial Dark Shadows. However, he'll best be remembered for playing Mary Beth Lacey's husband Harvey in the popular 80s cop show Cagney and Lacey. John Carlin died of heart failure on the 22nd of January 2020. He was 86 years old. The French Canadian actress Daniel Wieme made waves, appearing in an erotic film in 1969. Funnily enough, it was called Valerie. She also starred in The Sensual Sorceress from 1972. The cinematography, editing and music score are all impeccable in Kumel's film. The next high art, Vampire Flick, which would be as alluring as Daughters of Darkness, is Tony Scott's The Hunger from 1983. It also revolves around a devastatingly beautiful aristocratic bloodsucker in the form of Catherine Deneuve. What's rather apt here is that one of the taglines for Kumel's picture is they hunger for your blood. During the course of the film we learn that a number of girls in the area have been found murdered, their bodies drained of blood. In fact while Stefan and Valerie are out wandering the city they see one of the victim's corpses being removed from a property. Valerie is left perturbed when she notices how fascinated Stefan is with the poor deceased girl. The Belgian actor Georges Aman appears in the film as a retired policeman who's highly suspicious of the enigmatic Countess. This movie has style to burn and I simply adore the decor of the hotel the protagonists inhabit. For its interior, the Hotel Astoria in Brussels was used. Daughters of Darkness was filmed around the July of 1970 and it looks far more expensive than its $750,000 budget. When it was originally released in the States, it was cut by 12 minutes to give it an R rating. The film was first seen in America in New York on the 28th of May 1971. Its original French title is Les Lèvres Rouges, The Red Lips. An equally enticing title. I'm Stephen Archibald and thank you very much for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. Please feel free to follow me or subscribe. 
Look after your good self and stay safe in the dark. Goodbye for now. If you think these ladies are something, wait until you meet Mother. She's something else.